All right. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I would recommend checking it out. Uh, there is so much free PR out there between social media, between sending out press releases, between getting on public access TV. Most people actually don't think of public access TV as a venue for getting the word out there. Most areas have a station, and they are desperate for programming. So if you can recruit some of your members to go out and do a sample Toastmasters meeting on live TV, you never know where that's going to end up. And you can use that to promote yourself. Hey guys, check out, we were on channel 33 at 7 o'clock. It's just one more PR piece that you can send out there. And then if you are on public access TV, you can send a press release out to the local paper saying, hey, we were on TV. This is, this is news, guys. <laughs> so magazine recycling. Everybody gets a Toastmasters magazine once a year. If you look back, most people save those magazines. They rarely go back and read them again. Do a newspaper, do a magazine collection for your club. You'll end up with a stack. Go to Staples or Home Depot, get those little white mailing labels. Put your club information on there, your website information, the date and times you meet. Bring them out to libraries, bring them out to doctor's office, to dentist. They love stuff like that. It's free PR. You'll get members that way. So there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do. How many of you guys work? How many of you guys don't work? Can I trade with you guys? <laughs> So for those of you that work that either are employees or own their own businesses, many times you can go to networking uh, groups, BNI, chamber groups. BNI, you can wangle a free invitation twice. They might pressure you about joining, but you can say, sorry, I'm too busy. But chamber meetings, you can generally hit them up. You can go to business after hours. You can go to morning networking meetings. Sometimes they cost a buck or two. Always mention Toastmasters. Push, 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 push. And the great way to do this at a networking meeting is there's usually 10 to 50 to 100 people in networking. Everybody does their two minute elevator speech introduction. Keep track of those people. They're like, oh, really quiet. Or they have a lot of ums and ahs. Those are the ones you target. Because you introduce yourself and they say, why, well, we're a member of Toastmasters. We meet in Glastonbury on Tuesday nights. And by the way, you and you and you and you and you could all provide and benefit from Toastmasters check us out. It's amazing how many members you can gather that way. Because most people have heard of Toastmasters, but realistically they have no idea what Toastmasters is. Toastmasters, that's a speaking group thing, right? That's, I hear that all the time. Or then you have the people like the cop that pulled me over a couple of years ago. And I swear this is not a joke. Mm -hmm. This happened to me. Going back from Cromwell Toastmasters, it's raining. I don't see well at night, especially in rain. So I'm going under the speed limit. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. I'm just going slow because I don't see well. Okay. Where are you coming from, Toastmasters? Have you been drinking? <laughs> no. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> he actually had to call his supervisor to check that I was telling the truth about Toastmasters being a public speaking organization. But people don't know, and people don't know about the leadership aspect and the communications aspect. If you think about leadership, if you're in management or you want to target management, speeches may not be the most important reason to come to Toastmasters. The evaluations are. Because how many times have you had a supervisor or been a supervisor and said, you didn't do it the right way. You do do blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh my god. Because someone's giving you a bad evaluation. But as an evaluator, you learn to give a constructive, positive evaluation. So from the leadership aspect, you're going to become a better manager. So that's something that you can appeal to people in management and business. Now, newsletters are something that Toastmasters encourage us up to do. You don't have to do them. It's purely a choice. What I would recommend if you were going to tackle doing this, do them quarterly. They are a great thing to put online, and they're also a great thing to put in visitor packets if you have them, and new member packets. Because then you can do an overview of what's going on in your club, who your offices are in the club, what the meetings are like, some information you can do about family members, for example. Now these things, these links are in your handouts. These are aggregate sites of all of the free press release places out there. Um, you have to do a lot of cut and pasting. So if you're going to use those, I would recommend writing up your press release in Microsoft Word, opening up a bunch of these sites and multiple tabs in your browsers and going cut, paste, publish, cut, paste, publish. 
Crescent is a free social media news review service, and then there's the local and state newspapers. If you have members that have won awards, you can send them a press release. It doesn't have to be a full one, but send them a news blur. If you have someone that's a member that won something or did an award or did something educational in their business, but they're a Toastmaster, send it to the papers because it's still promoting Toastmasters and it's helping to promote your members as well. And how many of you guys are using the pre-toast host to us? We are. Yes, you are. <laughs> how many of you guys have a website at all? Free Toast Host 2, as soon as a club is chartered, a website is developed for your club, whether you know it or not. So if you're not currently utilizing a website and you want your website to use, you can go on to the Free Toast Host 2 site and just claim it. It's your club number followed by Free Toast Host. Oh. Where is it? Oh, sorry, it's on your handouts. Um, but all you have to do is put your club number in and then the address, and then you hit claim, and it'll send you some login. There's also EasySpeak. EasySpeak has been around for a long time. It's unfortunately not as functional as it used to be, and there's not as much support, and it's not quite as user-friendly as Freepost Host 2 is. People are using blogs as websites. There's WordPress or Blogger. Facebook or Google Plus pages as websites. Um, hosted websites for the main. I would recommend if you have a techie person in your club and they suggest Let's do a build-it-yourself website one. The reason being, that person may not be around next year. And it also incurs a cost. You have to pay for website hosting, and you have to pay for a domain name, and you have to have someone that's technically savvy to maintain it. I've come across way too many clubs that have had a tech-savvy person develop the website. They've quit, they've left, they got hit by a bus. They are no longer able to access their website, and it's now extremely out of date. If you do want to do a standalone website, lovely.com or works.com are both free. Those are basically drag and drop doing yourself ones. I would recommend checking out Free Toast Host 2 site first. The built in agenda that they have is extremely useful. You can send it out automatically to all of your club members and then they can sign up on board. Now, this is support.toastmastersclubs.org. Sorry? Now, the su support site is actually not directly related to Toastmasters. So if you call Toastmasters International with a problem with Free Toast Host 2, they cannot answer your question. Just so you know, I had that question a couple of weeks ago. Um, these guys are actually built by Toastmasters. They maintain it for free. They develop it for free. They don't have a phone number you can call, but they have very active um, support forums. So if you have a problem or a question or an issue, go onto the forum and they usually get back to you within a day. They also have a lot of uh, good documentation out there. So. Yes, and unlike in the beginning, <laughs> there was nothing. Uh -huh. Now this is an average free post post two site. You can actually do quite a bit to customize it. You can add additional pages, you can put photographs in, you can put a custom Google map in, you can put videos in here. Um, you really don't need to know HTML it is a little user unfriendly in terms of when you first log in, there's a box. I can use the size to edit things. You can't break this, though. If you sign into this and you don't know where to go, just poke around within it for probably 20 minutes. You can't do anything wrong. Even anything you put in here or click can be unclicked or unchecked. Now, this is an example of a standalone website. This is HTML based. This is a Tumblr website. So Tumblr is a blog site. It's not particularly for everybody, no. This is a little hard to see. Um, this is a WordPress.com. It's also a blog, but this is a WordPress.com site. So you can use this as a website and you can use it as a blog as well. Now Toastmasters on YouTube is probably, if you're going to use something to promote your club, YouTube is great. There's a couple of different reasons behind Anything we post on YouTube is going to help your club search engine optimization. And you don't necessarily have to put videos up here. YouTube has come out with something within the last year that you can make slideshows out of. So if you have a club contest where you take pictures or you have a club event that you take pictures at, you can upload these and make a custom slideshow out of it. It's got some groovy graphics you can put in. You can put text overlay. You can put music alongside it. It's very, very easy to use because it locks 
walks you through all those steps. Each of those is also really helpful to members because not everybody wants their speeches taped for public viewing, but some people might want their speeches taped so that they can improve what they're doing. This is useful because YouTube has three different settings. They have a public setting, which means that anybody can see it online. There's a private setting, which means that someone else can have the link besides you to view the video. And then there's non-public at all, which is you're the only person that can see it. So if you set it as private and someone wants their speech tape, then you can just send them the link and then they can preview it and watch their hand motions and their mannerisms as often as they want. And they can't be, they're not afraid of someone else saying, well, you're not a good speaker. So it's just in terms of feedback, I have found taping one's lips is extremely useful because even if you have a great evaluator, sometimes you don't catch things that you do all the time. I know when I have more of a space, I have a tendency to do this a lot. And when I've taped myself, which I'm doing now, I catch things like that. And it's great for member demonstrations. Say you had a member, potential member, want to come in, but didn't want to come to a meeting yet, and the explanation you gave them, maybe they didn't quite get it. If you tape a meeting, for example, with everybody's permission, and you need that, you can send that to that person saying, here's what our meetings are like, this is how they're run. And then somebody can see that, so that they can see, okay, this is organized, you get evaluations, because that's another misconception that people think. You just get up and speak. When you say, oh no, you have people that come and evaluate you, and to give you feedback so you can become a better speaker, they go, oh, I didn't know that. So you have to educate that. And part of the VP of PR is educating the public about the cult of Toastmasters. And many people say that, yes, we've all jumped the Kool-Aid because we're all here sitting in this room. Now, YouTube's come out with some neat things recently. You can have a banner that you can change any time. You can put photos in there that you can change any time. You can create a custom graphic that you can change any time. And up here, you can't really see it, but if you have Google Plus page, if you have a Facebook page, if you have a website, you can add those links up here. There's also an about section, and you can have a whole channel so all of your videos are in one place so people can see them. And then you can embed the videos. So if you have a great video that you took, or even a great video that Toastmasters has provided, and you want people to see that, you can embed it right into the website itself. Oh, yes, thank you. Do you want some more? I'm fine. Does anybody here blog? I know you do. Because <laughs> I just read them this morning. Does anybody here know what a blog is? Anybody not know what a blog is? Is everybody awake this morning? <laughs> Jeez, it's hot, I know. How much are you asking for? What's that? For us to be awake. Um, 50%. Oh, okay. I, I tell the dirty jokes at the end, and that's when you wake up. <laughs> for, for those not really familiar with blogs, are they're blogs. They're like a diary online. You can put business stuff, you can put personal stuff. They're great for Toastmasters, though. They're very easy to edit. If you can use Microsoft Word, you can use a blog. They're actually easier than Microsoft Word. And they're great for publicity. Pre-Toast Host 2, while it's great as a website, will not help you at all with getting your club found. It has pretty much zero search engine optimization value. I'm not sure why, but their content management system Google and Bing don't really like it that much. After YouTube, if you're going to try one other social media venue to promote your club, I would recommend the blog. Because you can put anything on it. You can put pictures. You can put a paragraph. If you have a member that likes to write, even if, even if they're not an officer, get them involved. And blogs don't have to be novels. If you have a paragraph, that's your blog post. If you have meeting minutes, put them on your blog. You do that at Chrome. And it's great mm. so that people, when they're searching for Cromwell Community Toastmasters, they don't usually come across our website first. They come across our blog first. They come across our Twitter feed first. Blogs are great because if you have them online, people will find you. And not necessarily from the new content that you're putting up. But I have my own blog that I started in 2008. People find me from blog posts that I wrote in 2009. So once you put content out there, the search engines love this. So there's a lot of social media venues out there. There's way too many. And I'll go over some more of these, but what I would recommend from a VP of PR standpoint, pick two. YouTube and blogs would be the first
course to write would recommend, but some of you might find other venues you feel more comfortable with. You cannot realistically as a human being do all of them and do all of them well. Find a couple you like, stick with them. If you start using one for publicity and you find you don't like it, or you find it's not getting you anything, then stop. Don't take it down. The last thing I recommend you post on any social media venue is, hey, come find us here. So that if someone does come across your blog that you haven't used for a year, they at least know where to find you. Come find us on Twitter, come find us on Facebook, or at least just come check out our website, because that will still help you in the long run. Now these are some different options for blogs. Blogger.com is owned by Google. Google loves its own product. <laughs> they really do, and it's by far the easiest to use. WordPress.com is another one. It's a bit more complicated. It has more bells and whistles to it. Tumblr.com is another blogging platform, fairly easy to use. Much better for photographs than yes. text. Yes, I was actually just going to say that. Which, which one? Um, Tumblr is much better for pictures. But all of them are great for pictures. Uh, WordPress.org, I bring this up because if you start a WordPress blog, you want the .com. You don't want the .org. .org, you need someone technical to install it. You need to pay for hosting and you need to pay for a domain name. You don't want that one. What I would recommend is if you don't know which platform that you want, start an account on all of them. Play around with it. Figure out which one that you like better. They all have templates that you can customize. You can change the colors, you can change the headers, you can change which text types you want to use. Find out which ones you like the best and then just delete the other ones. As you create accounts, this is something I learned in a completely different job, but sooner or later you will not be the VP of PR. So create a one-page summary of what accounts already exist for your club with username and password, so you can just hand the sheet to somebody else and you don't have to teach them all the passwords. Chris touches, touches, or, sorry, Andrew touches on a good point, and I was actually going to go over that at the end, but I'll go over that now since he thoughtfully brought it up as the lead. I love him. He is so awesome in Cromwell. <laughs> Most of these social media accounts you can have multiple administrators in. Uh, Twitter, you can only have one. But if you start a Facebook business club page, you can have multiple administrators for it. A blog, you can have multiple writers for it. What I would recommend, though, is don't go by one person's email address. If you're going to set up a Twitter account, set up a club Gmail account and give a bunch of people access to that. That's also useful because then you can put that Gmail account up on Toastmasters International website and you never have to worry about it changing again. So just give multiple people access and then there's all one point of contact for any of these accounts. So if you need to reset information, you can go right back to that one. This is Cromwell. Am I proud of my club or what? <laughs> <laughs> this is a blogger.com blogger website. And it's great because you can put uh, all of that email. So when someone promotes something, someone can follow this blog and they don't have to come, keep coming back to the blog all the time. They just sign up their email address. And WordPress has this option too. And anytime you publish something new, they'll actually automatically get a copy of your email. And you can put links in. There's a lot of bells and whistles in all of the blog formats that you can add. If you're on Facebook, you can put in that Facebook feed so it draws in your posts. You can put in a Twitter feed so it draws in the posts. So play around with the stuff. It's really cool all the stuff you can do with it. Um, there's some links in there too about feeds. If you do start a blog, there's a free program out there where you can set it to automatically feed the post into Twitter and automatically feed it into Facebook. So if you're going to use multiple accounts, make it easy for yourselves. We don't have a lot of time. And this is, we're coming to do a voluntold for this. Voluntold. <laughs> you guys were all volunteers? Yeah. You really did drink the Kool Aid. But seriously, I mean, we don't get paid for this, so we're volunteers. We want to make this as easy and as less least time consuming as possible in an effort to promote the clubs as well as we can. And this again is a WordPress. They're using this particular one just as a blog. And this is another Tumblr one. Tumblr templates are not as pretty as the others. I don't know why, they just are not. How many of you guys are on LinkedIn? Okay. How many of you guys actually use the Toastmasters groups on LinkedIn? Anyone? Toastmasters. 
Toastmasters International has two really, really, really good LinkedIn group slash forums. I would recommend you guys join. It is, it is a great resource, both for information, both for content, for ideas, for issues you might run into in a forum meeting. We had an issue in Carmel a couple of years ago where we had a really, really wonderful woman come to our meeting. We wanted her to come back. She wore way too much perfume. And we had a couple of people in our club that were really irritated by strong fragrances. What do you do in that kind of situation? You can't say to the person, you need to cut the perfume. I mean, how do you put that the right way? We posted this on the Toastmasters forums within an hour, I had over 200 responses from other clubs around the world that had experienced the same issue mm -hmm. with some really, really helpful feedback on it. <laughs> so since then, if you have questions, if you have ideas, you're doing table topics for the first time and you're scared stuff and you need some ideas besides what you can Google, go there. There are always really, really experienced Toastmasters or people that have run into those things before that can help you. And no question is considered wrong or too dumb. Believe me, I've seen some doozies on there that are not dumb questions. But like, you know, they should have known that, but you don't. Because unless someone tells you, you're not going to know. Use this as a resource. You can start your own Toastmasters group on LinkedIn. I would really recommend, don't bother. You might have one or two people that are already using LinkedIn join the group. You're not going to get a lot of activity on it. It's not going to be used to promote your club. So I'm going to tell you up front. You might see that option, but don't bother. You know, there's other groups too. There's the two main ones, but there's also smaller groups all over the world. We also have a District 53 group. And just to give you an idea of how much the individual groups are used, if you join the District 53 group, pretty much the only person that you'll see posting will be me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have a lot of people in our district. Facebook. How many of you guys have personal accounts? Facebook for club use is now unfortunately approaching zero in terms of usefulness. And I'm going to be honest with you about this one because it used to be the number one way to attract members besides having a club website. Now it's right down there pretty much at zero. Facebook over the past year has changed the rules of engagement. So if you want people to like your page or you want people to see your posts, they want what you do is pin to play. So if you have 100 people that like your club page, when you post something on here, you might have two see it now. They're throttling, is what they're calling it. They're throttling posts because they want you to pay. So I wouldn't recommend not doing a Facebook club page, but don't expect a lot from it. It is still a great place to put up, it's a great place to put posts up. If you have a club contest, if you have new officers, put that information up there, but don't expect a lot of return on value. And it's worth mentioning that if you post pictures there, then Facebook has fairly broad permissions to use those pictures as they want. So I wouldn't give them anything if you can possibly help it. <laughs> well, actually, technically, all of the social media channels have that in there. Remember, you live forever up there. <laughs> if you die, your Facebook account doesn't live forever, unfortunately. My grandmother passed away a couple of years ago. I can't take them. In fact, I just take her page down. Well, I have two friends that have passed away, too, and I see, oh, so-and-so has liked this page. I go, ooh, mm -hmm. yeah. So fan pages, they're also called business pages or on our place, club pages. Those are public. Um, there's also groups similar to LinkedIn groups. Again, you can start one for your group. Don't expect a lot of engagement. District 53 has a group. Again, there's not that many people posting on it. But it is a good place to join because when we do put information about District 53 going on, we put it up there. So it's a good place just to get information about what's happening within the district trainings. Um, we have the, the January GM Jam is very soon, so we put that information up there comments with some issues. And then personal pages. And personal pages are not public. This is an example of a group where people can chit-chat back and forth within that. <coughs> this is an example of the Toastmasters page that they set up as a personal page. Now, Facebook does not like you to advertise on a personal account. And 
mean, they probably wouldn't shut the account down if you sold something on here, if you put prices on here, and somebody got annoyed and reported you, they would kick you off of Facebook. But even if it wasn't against Facebook's terms of service to use a personal page to promote your club, it doesn't help your club. Because when someone's not logged in, this is all they're going to see. They'll see your header, they'll see a little bit of information, but they're not going to see any of the content that you've posted, depending on what privacy settings that you put in. But in most cases, this is what you'll see. So if you have a Facebook personal account type as a club, people can't see anything that you put in there. But you do need the personal account to create the club page. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you don't want to join Facebook and you do want to create a club page, there are ways to lock your account down so people can't friend you, they can't find you, they can't see you. So you don't actually have to use it, you just need the account. How do you transition that over if somebody's put it on their real personal account and then you don't want to start a new one? Oh. You, you, can, you can transfer it into a business account, but it does, from past experience, lose a lot of the information that's there. I can yeah. send you the link for doing that. Um, and it doesn't necessarily transfer the friends into place, so you lose all that. The main difference, if you're not sure what the difference is, is you'll say like, or you've liked it already, or it'll say friends at the top. But there are, like I said, an awful lot of Postmasters clubs that have set their pages up as personal accounts. And that's through no fault of their own. Facebook does not make that apparent when you sign up for a Facebook account. They don't say, are you signing up for a personal, are you signing up for a business, or for some other reason. Any of you on Twitter besides you? <laughs> Twitter I like, and I like it because you can go source people. It's also by far the hardest social media medium to use, but it can also be the most beneficial. Facebook, you have to get people to come to your page. With Twitter, you can go out and you can source people locally. So if you live in Hartford, for example, you can do a search on Twitter or you can do a search on some of the related free sourcing accounts and say, I want to know everybody that has an active Twitter account in Hartford and it will return you with about 7,000 people. And then you can go and you can target those people. Hey, we're Toastmasters, come check us out. So it's nice because you can reach out and touch someone, you don't have to wait for people to come to you. So if someone's interested in setting a Twitter account, it would be more than happy to help. I have cheat sheets developed for all of this stuff. So if anybody wants to set up a Facebook club page, for example, or a Twitter page, or a blog, let me know. I can email them the step-by-step -step walkthroughs. This is a great place to content source, because there are thousands and thousands and thousands of Toastmasters around the world on Twitter. There's districts on there. There's international leaders. There's also a huge, huge amount of professional public speakers on here. And when you're looking for content to promote on your own social media, think content sourcing. And also think that you only realistically need to come up with 10% of your own stuff. The other 90% is someone else's. It's called repurposing. It doesn't mean you're stealing their content. It means that you're taking that and saying, hey, look at this great public speaking post that I found. I really like that they touched on mannerisms. That's your post that you're putting up there, but someone else wrote it. And by doing that, what you're showing people coming across your accounts is you're putting them as someone that's doing research, that you're an expert, and you have your own commentary on it. So you can make lists on Twitter, which is hugely useful. So even if you're not going to use Twitter to promote the club, you can use it to content source. You can use it for news sourcing. It's great for up-to-date news sourcing. Remember the plane that went down in the Hudson a couple years ago? That hit Twitter 20 minutes before it that whirlwind that hit Sprint it was about a year ago or so, that hit 10 minutes on here before it hit the news. I was calling friends up in Springfield saying, get down. So in terms of what's going on up to the minute, everywhere over the world, this is a great place to go. And Twitter re redid its format recently. It now has this humongous area that you can use to promote your club. So you can put a picture of all your club members up there you can put a picture of your local contest, a picture of your officers, and you can change it anytime you want. You don't have to be a graphic designer to use this stuff. It's basically just attaching a photo to email. You hit upload, boom, you get the picture, and then you can move it up and down. So this is some fun stuff because then you can reply if you go to. You can have a conversation with someone that you're not even following them, they're not even following you. So it's a great place just to promote the club. And Twitter does help with your search engine optimization. Anybody here on Google Plus? Okay. Anybody?
is Google's Facebook competition right now. It's still as social media networks go, it's fairly new. It has more similarities to Twitter though than it does to Facebook. Google Plus, again, because just like Blogger is owned by Google, anything that you put in here, Google will love you forever. <laughs> and you can see that because your website, your Free Toast Host 2 website, has Google Analytics that you can put in it. So you can see where your traffic's coming from. So if you start to use Google Plus, see if you're getting traffic from this stuff. The neat, the neat thing is if you start a Facebook Pub account and you start a Google Plus account, the nice thing is you can put the same content in both places. And there's two reasons behind this. Google cannot see, for the most part, the content that you post on Facebook. If you put it in Google+, Plus, it will like it. You're also hitting two different target markets because most of the people that are on Facebook are not on Google+, Plus and vice versa. So it's just one-stop shopping for your content. So you could have Facebook open, you could have Google+, Plus open, and you could just say, great article, blah, 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 paste it into the other one. So you're getting a double mint gum, double mint treasure. It's the same kind of idea, but you want to do less work. When Google Plus first came out, there was two clubs using it. Now there are thousands of clubs using it. So it is gaining in popularity. It is a great place to do a lot of other things in here. You can put photo albums in it. You can put club news into it. You can also connect your YouTube account to it. So it actually has a lot more bells and whistles than Facebook. And this is an example of a Google Plus page. I'm cut close to the ground. Where leaders are mad. <laughs> but the neat thing about Google Plus is it's like Twitter. You can go out and you can circle people, which is kind of like following them on Twitter. And people can circle you. And you can use this as a con content aggregation source. Because again, there's other Toastmasters clubs on here. There's other Toastmasters. And there's a boatload of other people speakers on here that you can use to gather content for helping to promote your club. Now Pinterest I bring up, Pinterest is fairly new in the advertising world. There's a few Toastmasters clubs using it. I think Toastmasters really haven't found out where they sit with this, but this is a great place to find Toastmasters jokes or Toastmasters cartoons or things that are related to public speaking, public speaking quotes that are neat. So if you're looking for content, it's a great place to go and source content. Um, I came across a couple of really, really good Toastmasters related things. There was this truck with two pieces of bread coming out of the top of it. That was the toaster truck, for example. So if you're looking for stuff to put in your newsletter, you know, try to make sure though, just in terms of photos, you make sure you have provenance for the photos. So if this is someone's copyrighted material, you're not going to want to post it online because you could get in trouble. That's a whole other conversation. But it's a great for speeches too. If you're looking for ideas for your own personal speeches, you'd be surprised how much actual content is on Pinterest. If you just go and you search for something specific like horses or bees or gardening or construction, there's a lot of ideas that link to other content outside of Pinterest. So you can find some great blog posts on there just to get ideas from and learn for your own careful on the contest though you need 75 percent of your own material yes <laughs> um, this is a toastmasters club one of the few i found using it um, pinterest is a lot like a pin board you know those old-fashioned cork boards that put pins in that's what people do is they pin images and these all link to external content instagram i only bring up it's been used by two clubs one of them is toastmasters international I bring it up now because if you guys stay in Toastmasters within another four or five years and Instagram sticks around, this is where you're going to find your younger members. There are so many younger people using Instagram right now that is a promotional tool. It hasn't quite hit Toastmasters yet, but if the platform stays around, it might it might be a good place to go to source people. Do you have a question? I I don't have a question, I have a comment about this. Mm -hmm. Kids are constantly looking for the newest tool because they don't want to be using the tool that their parents are using. Right. <laughs> so at, we wind up always kind of trying to jump the gun and follow them and then they move on to a new platform. So. Yeah, the kid, kids used to be on Facebook, now they're all on Twitter. Mm -hmm. 
Although some are asking about the demographics last weekend when we went up and drive all three demographics age wise for Claire's, I found somewhere between like 15 and 70. So <laughs> it, it, it seems to be across all age groups. So this is the, the one Instagram account that I found. Now content sourcing, again, to go back to that 1090 thing, if all you guys did was talk about your club, it's boring, right? Except for you guys. So think about finding some other things that would help other people because the point of social using social media and using press releases and using all of these other things to promote the club is to provide information. You want people to come to your club because they're going to hopefully potentially learn things. And in order to do that, you're going to want to put educational stuff out there. So go source some public speaking blogs. Go follow some people on Twitter. Go find some business pages on Facebook, for example, that you can find good resources to share. Because that's what will help promote your club more, is putting yourself out as, we're going to come to you guys and teach you. We're going to suck you in, and then your VP membership is going to jump on. So there's a lot to go over in terms of social media, and there's a lot to go over in terms of promoting the club. You can put into it as little time or as much time into it as you want. There are so many free tools for making this stuff easier to go. In your handouts, there's two tools. One is called Hootsuite, and the other one is Bufferout.com. Both of those have free versions and paid versions. I don't think that anybody realistically needs a paid version. But both of those will let you do is they'll let you connect multiple social media accounts in one place. So when you have content you want to post, you can put it into those tools schedule it, and then push it out all at the same time. It's one click, and you're done. Um, Hootsuite and Buffer. And the neat thing about this is, say you're an early bird, I don't get five o'clock in the morning, for example, but most of the people that follow me online are not awake yet. They come on at like 7.15. So when I start promoting my content online, I'm not pushing stuff out at five o'clock in the morning, but I'm working on my I work on putting it into the schedulers that you can set to schedule and promote at certain times, and that's when people are online. Facebook has its own internal scheduler. You can put in daily, hourly Facebook posts up until the end of next year. So if you think about it, realistically, if you have a whole bunch of content promoted, don't push it out there all at once. Schedule it, because then it schedules out all the content that you have. You can put one or two posts a day on Facebook and just take half an hour every month and pre-schedule them, and then you don't have to worry about it. It just posts automatically, which is kind of a nice thing because then you don't have to worry about it. You know, the other thing is when you use Facebook, when you use Twitter, when you use Google Plus, each of these has analytics. So you can say, okay, if I'm posting at 10 a.m., I'm not getting a lot of feedback, a lot of engagement from me. Maybe I should consider scheduling or going online and posting at 6 in the evening or eight in the evening and seeing how much engagement you get them. Because you want to optimize the time when people are seeing that stuff and they're passing it on. So use the tools that these things have to make sure that your content is seen by more eyes. Now if anybody has questions about things that they're not picking up right now, my business card is on the back. Call me or email me anytime you want. Well, not at 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm up. What's that? We'll schedule it. But if you need help with a website, if you need help setting up accounts, if you have ideas, if you run into a problem, call me. I am here to use. Please don't abuse me, although communication abuse is okay, but I'm here to help you. We need to get the word out and make your club successful. If you're in Toastmasters, you're here not just to help yourselves, you're here to help other people. So promoting your club is one step of that. Work together with your team. That's number one. If you have people in your team that are not committing to that, I'll be committed that they shouldn't be on your team. You need to replace them promptly. Because that's important. If you have a vice president of education or a vice president of membership or a president that is not being active, they should not be an officer. I'm being completely honest because all of you guys need to work together cohesively to help the club. You each have your different more time 
spend more energy on the content. Um, with these folks. PR more about attracting. We need membership to keep stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I found social media is great, but it will not replace in person too. You need to do a 50-50 with that one. If you can get out and promote content within your community, that is going to help you just as much as getting found online. Um, a couple of years ago, when I was VP of PR for Cromwell, we made up flyers and we split them up. We gave everybody in our club free flyers. I was doing a couple hundred and we printed up. And we gave them out to all of the members and said, here, go hit up the local business. None of the businesses around us even knew about us. So if you're thinking of ways to get that word out there, go shake hands. Go get out there and say, hey, we're Toastmasters. Maybe your employees might be interested. Maybe you would be interested in this. But unless you tell people, a lot of people don't read the paper anymore. Some people don't necessarily are going to go online. So the, net, the handshaking and the networking in person is going to help you just as much as promoting it online. Any other questions? Well, you've organized your slideshow very well. I mean, the sheet's nice. It's got all the things. But yeah. You've categorized essentially. Mm -hmm. Is there a chance that you can send a copy of this? To it's online. It is online. I will. Okay. It's on SlideShare, and I would be happy to send you the link. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. As far as analytics go, is free toast host to offer something? Because we run a club in a corporate environment, so we can't do anything on social media. Yeah. Okay. So we, we have. Free Toast Host 2 in our, our own internet. So we're going to be using Free Host Toast, Free Toast Host 2, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Does it offer something as far as analytics to let you know where people are coming from, how many people are visiting your page? The, the site itself doesn't offer internal analytics. Um, there is a line, though, if you sign up for Google Analytics, that will be set and let you insert the HTML code for that. Anything else? Just a note, I'm in a corporate club and they send out monthly and bi-monthly emails to everyone and our Toastmasters group is in that blob and they send it out and they also have screens on all the floors with slideshows going and Toastmasters is on the screens and you bring people in with that. How many of you guys are in Toastmasters? Okay, I'm working on, and I'm not quite done, that's why I didn't do it this way. We, I'm working on a module specifically for Toast clubs because promoting with Toast clubs is very different. A lot of you can't use social media, and you don't have access to a lot of the things that community clubs have. So I do have a list going that I'd be happy to email you with some ideas that other closed clubs that have given you the work well. So if anybody would like that, send shoot me an email, or give me your email, I'd be happy to send it off to you guys. I'm also in a closed club, and one of the things we do is just once a year we'll have a, a lunch and learn where we have some speaker to try to introduce people to Toastmasters, but we try to find a speaker who does something to draw people in. Like last year we had a woman who was a forensic scientist, so she's like a CSI person, and she just happened to be an advanced Toastmasters person. But we're kind of running out of people that we know in Toastmasters who do something where is your phone? Uh, Winslow. Oh, okay. I think I emailed so, your phone or something. Okay. Um, I so, would be happy to put that word out there for people. Yeah, my question is, is there some sort of directory mm -hmm. for people in Toastmasters that say, one, they're willing to come and talk to another club, and two, this is what they do, and people make sound like something. I don't believe there is one yet for District 53. That is a great idea. Um, I actually do know plenty of people in Toastmasters that would come and speak. So I can pass that to you. Anybody else? We're about out of time. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
in other ways, yeah. that's important. Because in many ways, Facebook oh, oh, should really be run by the vice president of membership, membership because it's a right. way of like promoting the club like internally, but it's yeah. not the best so source for making extra connections. Like I was thinking, oh, that's important, but yeah, that's going to be the existing yeah, members that are joining that. So that doesn't really yeah. help the PR. So we have our internet which is fully engaged with. They have a way to thinking about that. On our department side, we have a way to our post message free post But besides that, we don't have much of a website. I was just suggesting to Heather, and I can share this with I guess we're a special breed, the uh, corporate clubs, but we have our our agendas online, and you can assign yourself a speaking role, you know, in advance. So certain members really want to get through their confident communicator or just you know get on the agenda, so they can fill up the, the speaking slots, and whoever is presiding over the meeting can see what's left, who needs what roles need to be assigned. Mm -hmm. So it does get a decent amount of traffic. And this is SharePoint? SharePoint, yes, 2010. But it, and it's not terribly complicated. I could definitely, <laughs> you know, help anyone who it makes wants again. to right. use SharePoint. Is it is it <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 L spits L S T I T Z at Travelers. So oh it's hard, it's hard to L touch on. This is, my first name is Laura. L S P I T Z. Uh, travelers. Are you a publishing or collaboration? We are a, I think we're a publishing, no, I think we're a collaboration site. Okay, so I had to stop and think. I think we're a team site, a collaboration site. So, I, I mean, I would like to use it more effectively, but people do seem to like, just just email you know, me, organizing. Yeah, I mean, we use a spreadsheet, you know, I said it was all the way out from the company. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you something about your um, tripod. I just got one. Can, can you actually 